One day while looking at a house, my brother asked the realtor which direction was north because he said he didn't want the sun waking him up every morning. When the realtor asked, does the sun rise in the north? Someone else jumped in and said the sun rises in the east and has for some time. And the realtor shrugged and said, oh, I don't keep up with those things. And then she voted. <laughs> So one day we were eating lunch at a cafe and I overheard someone talking about the sunburn they had gotten on their drive down to the seashore on the weekend. She drove that in a convertible but didn't think she'd get a sunburn because the car was in the way. And she voted. In high school physics class, the teacher was talking about a new weapon that uses sonic waves to burst enemy soldiers' chests. And one student spoke up and said, well that's dumb, why don't they just wear headphones? And few years later, he voted. I used to work for a 24-7 call center when one day somebody asked, called and asked what our our hours were, and then I said, this is a 24-7 call center, we're open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and he asked, is that Eastern Pacific time? I wanted to end the call quickly, I said, Pacific, and a few years later, he voted. We all share the responsibility of voting in order to have a voice in our government, and our, the current, current lack of voter participation needs to be addressed. As a citizen who tries to keep up with politics and election results, I've seen firsthand how serious the apathy toward voting really is. I'm hoping I can share some helpful thoughts with you. As Christian citizens, it's our responsibility to vote in every election in order to promote righteousness by electing leaders that will promote righteousness in government. I'm going to examine three reasons why Christians must vote. First of all, politics is a vacuum. Second, those who don't vote don't vote out of apathy. And third, Christian voters can make a difference. So first of all, Politics is a vacuum. We need to resist the rising tide of evil that we see in our culture by voting for good candidates. And in order to resist an atheist takeover, that will, uns will certainly happen if we don't do so. In an April 5, 2008 article entitled, Why Christians Should and Must Vote, radio host Brian Fisher said, quote, It's utterly illogical to abandon the supervision of our public life to those who have no respect for the God who grants them their authority, end quote. There's a continued slide away from the moral standards of, of God's word, and as quoted in the 1774 Journal of the Continental Congress, quote, It is an indispensable duty which we owe to God, our country, ourselves, and posterity by all lawful ways and means in our power to maintain, defend, and preserve these civil and religious rights and, rights and liberties for which many of our fathers fought, bled, and died, and to hand them down entire to future generations, end quote. Secondly, the majority of those who don't vote really have no excuse. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 4 million registered voters didn't vote because they said they disliked the candidates or were uninterested. An additional 2.6 million voters said they were too busy to vote. In addition, 30 million eligible Americans were unregistered to vote in the first place, and half of those didn't register because they were uninterested or refused to do so. It's obvious from these numbers that people are either just uninterested or apathetic about politics. Third, thirdly, Christian voters can make a difference. Let's say one day that you're in town doing errands, when you realize your car is almost out of gas. You pull into Costco only to realize it's closed for maintenance, then you realize the gas station on your side of the freeway is charging two more, two cents more than the gas station on the other side of the freeway. You have to decide whether to pay two cents more or fight your way through traffic to save some pocket change. This is similar to a common objection that many people bring up about politics. Many say that they won't vote if it comes down to the lesser of two evils. However, this really doesn't make any sense at all, because one person is going to win the election either way, and refusing to vote is not going to help anything. In fact, it promotes the less godly candidate to win. Your car has to be filled with gas one way or another, and refusing to fill it doesn't help anything. According to the Pew Forum, Christian evangelical Christians make up 23% of the U.S. population, and that percentage alone can decide an election. So let me summarize the three points we've covered. First of all, politics is a vacuum. Second, those who don't vote really have no excuse. And third, Christian voters can make a difference. So what should you do? Register to vote. Do a quick Google search and find your registration form. Mail it in, and then at election time, find the nearest polling place and vote. Do a little research and find out what the candidates stand for, and fill in the ovals completely. As political analyst Larry Sabato once said, quote, Every election is determined by the people who show up. End quote. It's important when it comes to politics to remember the bigger picture. It's not just about the number of ballots or who the next president is going to be. It's about future generations and what kind of a heritage we leave behind, whether it's a continued moral decline or one of righteousness. That is something to keep in mind while well voting. Let me end with this quote from the Reverend Charles Finney. He said, quote, The time has come that Christians must vote for honest men and take consistent ground in politics. Christians have been exceedingly guilty in this matter. But the time has come that they must act differently. God cannot sustain this free and blessed country which we love and pray for unless the church will take right ground. 
It seems sometimes as if the foundations of the nation are becoming rotten, and Christians seem to act as if they think God does not see what they do in politics. But I tell you, he does see it, and he will bless or curse this nation according to the course Christians take in politics. Thank you.